Welcome to the Paranormal Deep Dive from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks. Tucked away in the Pacific Heights neighborhood of San Francisco stands a building that has withstood time and turmoil, a building whose history reaches back over a century. The Queen Anne Hotel, with its ornate Victorian architecture and elegant facade, is a sight to behold, a rare reminder of the city's post-gold rush opulence. Its sweeping staircases, intricate woodwork, and grand fireplaces echo the wealth and ambition that shaped San Francisco in the late 19th century. But for all its beauty, there are those who say the Queen Anne is more than just a luxury hotel. It is a place where the past is very much alive, where the spirits of those who once lived and worked within its walls have never truly left. The story of the Queen Anne Hotel begins in 1890, a time when San Francisco was a city on the rise. Having survived the booms and busts of the gold rush, the city was now home to some of the wealthiest families in the country, many of whom were eager to provide their daughters with a proper education in etiquette and refinement. To meet this demand, an elite finishing school for girls was established on the site where the Queen Anne Hotel now stands. The school, known as Miss Mary Lake School for Girls, quickly gained a reputation for its strict standards and its emphasis on molding young women into the perfect society debutantes. Miss Mary Lake, the school's headmistress, was known for her stern but caring demeanor. A respected figure in San Francisco society, she took great pride in her work, dedicating herself fully to the education and well-being of the young women under her care. The building that housed the school was no less impressive, a grand Victorian structure designed to reflect the wealth and sophistication of the city's elite. With its high ceilings, intricate wood carvings, and expansive rooms, the school was a place of privilege, a sanctuary for those fortunate enough to attend. For years, the school flourished, and the building became a central part of life for the families who entrusted their daughters to Miss Lake's care. But like many institutions of its time, the school eventually closed its doors. The reasons for the closure remain a mystery, but some speculate that it was due to financial difficulties or changing societal norms. Whatever the cause, the building that had once been filled with the laughter and chatter of young women fell silent, its halls empty, and its classrooms abandoned. Yet the building itself remained, a testament to its storied past, and while it served various functions in the years that followed, including a stint as a boarding house and private residence, it wasn't until the 1980s that it was transformed into the Queen Anne Hotel. The hotel, carefully restored to reflect its original Victorian charm, quickly became a popular destination for tourists and history buffs alike. But as guests began to fill the rooms once again, so too did the stories of strange and unexplained occurrences. One of the most enduring legends surrounding the Queen Anne Hotel involves the ghost of Mary Lake herself. It is said that Miss Lake, who had devoted her life to the school, never truly left the building after her death. Her spirit is believed to haunt room 410, a room that was once her private office during the days of the school. Guests who have stayed in room 410 have reported a range of strange experiences, some benign, others unsettling. Many describe feeling an overwhelming sense of calm upon entering the room, as though they are being watched over by a protective presence. Others claim that their belongings have been mysteriously moved or even unpacked for them as if a helpful hand were at work. One guest, staying in room 410 for a weekend getaway, reported that upon returning to the room after an evening out, they found their suitcase neatly unpacked, with clothes folded and placed in drawers. Thinking it was a mistake made by housekeeping, the guest inquired at the front desk, only to be told that no staff had entered the room. The incident left the guest both puzzled and unnerved, but they couldn't shake the feeling that whoever or whatever was responsible had meant no harm. It is these small acts of kindness that lead many to believe that Mary Lake's spirit is a benevolent one. 
she is said to look after the guests of the hotel in much the same way she cared for her students, ensuring that they are comfortable and well taken care of. Some even claim to have seen her, a faint figure dressed in the fashion of the late 19th century, moving silently through the halls or standing at the foot of the bed in room 410. She does not speak, they say, but her presence is felt all the same, a gentle reminder that she is still watching over the building she once called home. But Miss Lake's ghost is not the only one, said to haunt the Queen Anne Hotel. Guests and staff alike have reported hearing strange noises, footsteps echoing down empty hallways, doors opening and closing on their own, and the faint sound of voices whispering in the night. These occurrences are most frequently reported near room 410, but they have been experienced throughout the hotel. Some guests describe waking in the middle of the night to the sensation of a cold breeze passing through the room, even though the windows are closed. Others have reported feeling sudden cold spots in the hallways, as though they have walked through an invisible presence. One former staff member recounted an experience that left them shaken. Late one night, as they were closing up the hotel for the evening, they heard the distinct sound of footsteps coming from the second floor. Thinking it was a guest who had wandered out of their room, the staff member went upstairs to investigate, only to find the hallway empty. As they turned to leave, they heard the footsteps again, this time directly behind them. But when they turned around, no one was there. The incident left the staff member convinced that the hotel was haunted, though they never saw the source of the footsteps. Over the years, paranormal investigators have been drawn to the Queen Anne Hotel, eager to uncover the truth behind the ghostly legends. Equipped with EVP recorders, thermal cameras, and EMF detectors, these investigators have spent countless hours exploring the hotel's rooms and hallways, searching for evidence of the supernatural. Some have captured what they believe to be the voice of Mary Lake, a faint whispering voice captured on an EVP recording during a late-night investigation of room 410. Others have detected sudden drops in temperature, particularly near the grand staircase and in the areas surrounding room 410. Photographs taken during these investigations have also revealed strange anomalies. Blurry figures standing in doorways, orbs of light hovering in the air, and shadowy shapes moving through the hallways. In one particularly compelling photograph, taken in the lobby near the fireplace, a faint figure can be seen standing by the hearth, dressed in clothing from the late 19th century. Though the figure is barely visible, some believe it to be the ghost of Mary Lake, still keeping watch over the hotel she loved so dearly. For all the stories of paranormal activity, there are those who remain skeptical. Some argue that the strange occurrences at the Queen Anne Hotel can be explained by natural causes. The age of the building, combined with its creaky floors and drafty windows, could easily account for the sounds of footsteps and the sudden cold spots reported by guests. Others suggest that the power of suggestion may play a role in these experiences. After all, the hotel's haunted reputation is well known, and it is possible that guests who expect to encounter a ghost may interpret ordinary events as something supernatural. Still, for those who have experienced the unexplained at the Queen Anne Hotel, such explanations fall short. There is something about the building that defies logic, something that lingers in the air long after the sun has set and the guests have gone to bed. Whether it is the spirit of Mary Lake watching over her former school or the ghosts of those who once lived and worked within its walls, the Queen Anne Hotel remains a place where the past and present seem to coexist in a delicate, mysterious balance. Today, the Queen Anne Hotel continues to operate as one of San Francisco's most beloved boutique hotels. Its Victorian charm, carefully preserved over the years, draws visitors from around the world, eager to experience a piece of the city's history. But for those who stay the night, the hotel offers more than just a glimpse into the past. 
it offers the possibility of encountering something far more mysterious. As the sun sets over Pacific Heights and the fog rolls in from the bay, the Queen Anne Hotel stands as a silent sentinel, its grand windows glowing softly in the twilight. For those who believe, it is a place where history and the supernatural are forever intertwined. A place where the spirits of the past still walk the halls. Their presence felt in the quiet moments between dusk and dawn. As guests drift off to sleep in their rooms, some may wonder whether they will awaken to find their suitcases unpacked, their bed covers neatly arranged, or a faint figure standing by the window, watching over them as they rest. And while some may dismiss these occurrences as the product of overactive imaginations, others will leave the Queen Anne Hotel convinced that they have experienced something far more tangible, the lingering presence of a woman who never truly left, a woman whose love for her school and for the building itself was strong enough to transcend time. Want to dig deeper in the paranormal deep dive? Press subscribe now wherever you download podcasts and catch brand new paranormal deep dives every single day from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks podcast.